What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to a Football Manager Experiment here on my channel and today we have Jose Mourinho managing Manchester United. In this video we are going to be simulating into the future with Mourinho as manager. We're going to see how he gets on, who he signs, how his managerial career will pan out, how Manchester United will do with him at the helm. As you can see in the top right the date is the 10th of June 2016. Hopefully he can do an okay job of course we'll then compare it to how he does in real life in a few years time I guess. But yes, this is what we're going to do. So to start with, I'm going to hot a day forward one year. We're going to see how he gets on in his opening season at Manchester United. Look at his transfers, who performed, who didn't. Hopefully you guys stick around. Let's go forward a year and see how Jose gets on. Okay guys, so we're here a year on. It's 2017. Let's see how Mourinho got on. Manchester United, continental reputation of course. I'm looking at their key players. There's nothing new going on there. Let's take a gander at the Premier League table and leading the way. Well, Arsenal on goal difference. Wow. Okay, so Manchester United and Arsenal, both of the exact same kind of uh, points tally you can see there, and the exact same kind of results. 25 wins each, 8 draws and 5 losses, but Arsenal, led by Arsene Wenger, have uh, won the Premier League. So, well, Mourinho isn't going to take that well. Manchester City finishing 3rd and Liverpool 4th. Leicester in their first season, of course, following their Premier League campaign, finishing 7th, and Chelsea in 8th. An interesting one right there. Either way, let's take a look at Manchester United's season as a whole real quick. If we look at their schedule, how do they get on in the Europa League? They got to the quarterfinals and they were knocked out by Monaco 2-1. So that's a little bit of a surprise there. In the FA Cup, they lost in the final against Manchester City. This game uh, was won by a Nasri winner. And looking at it, Yaya Torre sent off in the 16th minute... Um, but, well, despite that, United unable to make a difference with the extra man. In the Capital One Cup, how did they get on? They lost 2-0 to Liverpool. So, well, a trophyless season for Mourinho. But he's got close twice, finishing, you know, second in the league. Uh, of course, missing out ever so narrowly uh, in the FA Cup, trying to obviously emulate Van Gaal's footsteps. Let's take a look at their squad. Actually, to start with, let's look at the transfers. What did Mourinho do with his money? And, well, he spent a fair bit here. He signed Jose Calderon. Uh, who is a good little player. Let me put on the, the graph for the people who like to see it. 30 years old, the Spaniard. Uh, brought him in. He's done okay. He's played eight games for the match. He's done awfully. <laughs> He's played eight games for United in the Premier League. Not contributed anything. In the Europa League, he did get three goals. But 17 appearances... For a player who was signed for, well, £14.75 million, it's not the best return. Uh, the next player they brought in, Benatia, or Benatia, uh, from, uh, I was about to say Borussia Dortmund, it isn't, it's Bayern Munich, Jack. Wake up, the Moroccan, the 30-year-old centre-back. A position that a few years ago I perhaps would have agreed United really needed a massive player to kind of sign in that area of the pitch, but was small and playing well. I don't know if that's quite so much the case, but looking at it here, that's what Mourinho thought. Uh, Benatia was signed. 13 appearances. Didn't play a lot. Has he been injured this year? Uh, no. No, he hasn't. Okay, well, that's a weird one. So they signed him for £15 million and didn't play him. They signed Douglas Costa from Bayern Munich. A really good signing. I like this kind of signing. He did okay. 18 goals and 4 assists in the Premier League from 18 appearances. And uh, actually, looking at it here... All of these transfers happened in January. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So they didn't actually make it... That would explain the lack of appearances. See, he didn't spend any money in his first summer. Weird. Don't know what to explain with that, really. Anyway, that, that's what he did. Oh, Jetro Williams as well. We'll mention that one. I really write, rate Jetro Williams in real life. He joined. Uh, had a broken collarbone. Was out for three to four weeks. And he played two games. So that's a bit of a disappointment for him. And also, we'll have a look at Gokan Torre. Uh, this guy, the Turk. Uh, he's 25 years old, as you can see. Looks like a pretty good player. Uh, he played once in the Premier League. He also made 10 appearances in the Europa League. It seems like he did okay there. But really, looking at this as a whole, it's a little bit underwhelming. On the outs, Marcus Rashford went on loan to Wigan Athletic. I, I don't see that happening in real life, but there you go, FM. Um, not not rating him so highly. Nick Powell left the club, but with the exception of that, no real kind of massive departures, I guess you could say. Anyway, if we just quickly look at the landmarks, you can see Schweinsteig was appointed captain. In terms of who actually performed for the United this year, goal scoring wise, 
who was getting them the goals. It was Wayne Rooney, followed by Memphis Depay. Depay had a really good kind of bounced back season and actually played a hell of a lot of games for United as well. And uh, Martial there on 13 goals and Mata actually contributed. I was worrying and uh, wondering if perhaps Mata would be sold as, of course, Mourinho sold him at Chelsea. That hasn't happened in FM. He stuck around. He looks like he's been a pretty good player for them. In terms of average ratings, Luke Shaw actually leading the way. That's kind of cool to see, of course. Been out with such a long-term injury in real life. Good to see him in FM kind of bouncing back and playing fairly well. 47 appearances, 13 assists for him. A really good turnaround. And uh, Daley Blind as well doing a good job. Kind of curious to see where he's been playing. He's been playing at centre-back a lot, which, I don't know, Blind, I, I still don't see him as a centre-back, but I guess with uh, Benatia and, of course, uh, Smalling in the side, perhaps he could play more as a midfielder going forward. Anyway, that was season one of Mourinho. Let's go forward another year. Let's see what he manages to do in season two. Uh, second in the league, not bad, but I feel like there's a little bit more expected from him and then perhaps some silverware to come in the next year. Anyway, as I said, let's go forward to 2018, see how Mourinho gets on in his second season, and uh, well, we'll see if De Gea can be kept hold of for another year. Okay, guys, so we are back forward another year. It's 2018, the end of the year. I've loaded up the Manchester United profile. One of these players is not like the others. Eden Hazard, ladies and gentlemen, has signed for Manchester United. Um, 16 goals uh, in 37 appearances, and also 9 goals to his name. He's done quite well, hasn't he, really? Um, let's have a look at his attributes. Looking at them, he looks absolutely incredible. He's played well for them. I'm wondering who else they've signed. Let's not look at what they've done uh, in kind of trophy-winning-wise. Let's have a look at who they signed. So they signed Mkhitaryan from Dortmund on a free. I kind of like that as a free transfer, although looking here, he's been pretty underwhelming. 18 appearances as a sub in the Premier League. Not great. Andre Scherler reunited with Mourinho. A bit of an un unusual signing. Am I, am I allowed to say that's an unusual one? Of course, Scherler and De Bruyne and two players sold by Mourinho during his kind of tenure at Chelsea. Kind of weird to see Andre Scherler returning under a Mourinho-led side. They also signed Hugo Malo from uh, Celta, was that? I've never heard of this guy, if I'm honest. I've not seen him in, in FM before, but he looks like a really good little right-back for them. Kind of curious to see what that means for Jetro Williams, who, of course, they... Um, splash the cash on. They also brought in Ka uh, Carrasco from Atletico, a nice little player the Belgium can play on either wing. Uh, Eden Hazard, we've already talked about. Luis Gustavo, an anchor in the midfield. And all, I just saw another name that shouldn't be there. Let's go back. They've signed Gareth Bale for £47 million. What is happening? Mourinho has just decided to kind of buy a dream team. I mean, given the fact they finished second last year, you'd feel like if they didn't win the league with this team... They've, they've screwed up massively. So they signed Gareth Bale. He joined in August on deadline day, as did this guy, Storato, or Soraro even, the Italian centre mid. Looks like an OK player, but only made five appearances and was very underwhelming. I kind of feel like, given the fact United spent £153 million, they should get some success. Who did they sell? They have got a few big sales here. So they sold Martial to Schalke for £25 million. They sold Jose Calderon on to Dynamo Kiev. Not entirely surprising. He wasn't too convincing. Jesse Lingard went on to Watford, Fellaini to Leicester, and Daley Blin moving for £35 million to PSG. Some interesting transfers there. I feel like United bought in pretty well there. Let's have a look at the Premier League table. Let's see how they got on. And, uh, well, you can see here they finished second for another year in a row behind Arsenal. Is it still Arsenal led by Wenger? It is. Wenger has gone from finishing in the top four every year to deciding he wants back-to-back -back titles. I don't feel like Mourinho is going to be enjoying that too much. Anyway, looking here, uh, you can see Manchester City finishing behind United. In terms of the goal scorers and stats, uh, De Gea top of clean sheets, but I mean, that's not much of a consolation. Looking at the table, Everton getting relegated, Nottingham Forest going down, as was Sunderland. Uh, the team's coming up doing fairly well. Brighton doing okay. Ipswich, who got promoted recently, doing well as well. Um, Liverpool sneaking in the top five. Where's Chelsea? Chelsea in 13th. What is happening to Chelsea? Wow, they have really fallen off a cliff. I mean, if any, if FM's anything to go by, you're not, uh, sorry, Chelsea aren't going to be a top four team anymore. Uh, that seems quite apparent. Anyway, let's look at the rest of the United fixtures, see how they got on. So they were in the Champions League this year. Um, they won in the Capital One Cup semi-final. They lost in the final on penalties to Chelsea. Can you imagine the absolute drama of that? De Gea missed a penalty. That's how many penalties were taken in this game. De Gea was the crucial miss. And, well, I cannot imagine 
a universe in which Jose Mourinho loses the final to Chelsea. How amazing would that be? Rooney had a testimonial against Everton. Eden and Hazard got two in that. That's kind of interesting. In the Champions League, how far did they get? They got to the second knockout round. Yeah, no, in fact, the first knockout round, they got knocked out to Benfica 2-1. In the FA Cup, they lost on the in the fourth round to Bristol City of the Championship. Oof. And they actually got... Bristol City looked like they'd been promoted. Fair play to them. So that's good for them. They had a good year, apparently. In the Capital One Cup, we already looked at that. They've, they've not won anything again. I mean, I know he's lost another final and he's finished second in the Premier League again, but Mourinho, I was expecting more from you, son. Like, what, what has happened here? I mean, his stats are amazing in FM, and he signed some crazily good players. Let's have a look at that Manchester United squad real quick, see how good they actually are. Uh, looking here, goal-scoring-wise, uh, Hazard leading the way alongside Depay. Uh, Gareth Bale also contributed with some goals, so like all the signings really doing something, and Douglas Costa doing well. Juan Mata also really high up there, although out with an injury to end the year. He also got 14 assisted, Juan, which was the most in the club alongside Morgan Schneiderlin. Kind of interesting to see how this United team's changed quite a lot. Where Where is Rooney in all of this? Rooney made seven appearances, um, or seven starts, 18 appearances off the bench and got just the one goal. A really underwhelming performance by him uh, right there. Wow. Interesting stuff. If we look at their kind of top appearance makers, who leads the way? It's Eden Hazard followed by De Gea. Uh, Douglas Costa and Malo both playing a lot. Where is Luke Shaw in all of this? He had a really good year last year. This year... A 6.9 average rating in 38 games as a starter and 8 as a sub. That's shocking. That is really poor by Luke Shaw standards in terms of the top performers. A lot of, to be fair, a lot of Mourinho signings doing well. Bale's done well. Hugo Malo's done well. Benatia's done well. Douglas Costa's up there. Eden Hazard. One matter, the top performer for a Jose Mourinho side. I never thought I'd see the day, but there you go. Anyway, we will go forward once more. We'll see how Mourinho gets on in his third year in charge. Kind of curious to see how things pan out. I will join you guys in a second. And uh, yeah, let's see how he gets on. Okay, guys. So we are back again here. And I've gone to the Manchester United profile page. Mourinho isn't here. Where is he? What happened? We'll have a quick look at the you know, the kind of season. Emery is the new manager. Kind of rate the Spaniard. He's a pretty good manager in FM as well. If we look at their managerial history, Mourinho resigned from his role um, in... Well... It says the 7th of 2018, so he resigned at the end of last year. That's a really weird date to resign. Where is he? Where is he? Mourinho. Okay, he is the England manager. Wow, okay. Didn't predict this, but he is the England manager. We'll have a look at that in a second. We'll quickly have a look at how United got on uh, with them being Mourinho-less. And, uh, well, Arsenal won the league again. Please tell me Wenger's left. Ancelotti won the league this time. Still, still a pretty good achievement. Uh, Manchester United finishing third. Um, De Gea is still top of the clean sheet, still doing amazingly. Eden Hazard as well doing really, really well for them. Did United win anything under Emery? Can, can we... Do, I mean, did Emery do better than Mourinho? That's the question that I'm wondering right now. They lost in the Capital One Cup quarterfinal to Liverpool. In the Champions League, they got to the uh, quarterfinals and lost 2-1 to Bayern Munich. And they lost in the FA Cup final 2-1. So, United not winning anything for a third year in a row. FM... Being pretty cruel to them, if I'm honest. I thought they'd win something over the course of three years, with or without Mourinho. Anyway, let's have a look at Mourinho, see what he is doing um, at England. Of course, he's been at England's kind of uh, lead role, I guess, for a year now. I don't know if they're going to have played that many games. I might go forward to the end of these Euros and see how he gets on in 2019. Or I guess I could go forward to 2022, really. I didn't, ex I didn't plan to do this. I might go forward to 2022 and we'll see how he got on in the Euros and the World Cup. Because looking at it here, uh, he would have taken over, I believe, kind of at the end of the World Cup. So actually, look, England lost to Chile. Danny Welbeck's goal, not enough. Um, but you can see here, since then, it's just been a lot of friendlies and kind of the European friendly league. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to go forward once more. I didn't plan for this. I'm going to go forward to the end of 2022. We'll see how Mourinho got on at the England role. See if he's still there after a champion. Well, after a European Championship and a World Cup. Hopefully you guys stick around. I'll be back again one last time in this episode. And let's see how he did in charge of England.
Okay guys, so we've gone forward for the final time this episode. It's 2022, the World Cup just wrapped up and Mourinho isn't managing England anymore. Uh, Julian Lopetegui is actually the man in charge. Um, looking at England, we'll, we'll look here. They're sixth in the world rankings. We want to focus on Mourinho really. I'm going to find out when he uh, resigned. So he actually, he's now the manager of Italy. Interesting. When did he leave England? Okay, so he left actually after... After the World Cup, where they lost to Algeria, right? So we are going to just look at England, I guess. He's gone to Italy, which is kind of interesting. Um, but no, let's have a look at how he did at England over the last four years, because he was here for kind of the entirety of the time I simulated forward. So as we know, in 2018, he took charge following the Chile exit, uh, and then they had the European campaign, which it looks like England kind of passed the test with flying colours here. Um, they only conceded two goals in the entire of the qualifying. Which is pretty good. I'll, I'll give them that. Not bad. A 9-0 win against Malta's not too bad. Harry Kane with 5. In the European Championships themselves, they actually lost in the quarterfinals to France. Interesting. Looking at the game, um, they went out on penalties. But actually, France had a man sent off. Unfortunately, I can't click on the game because it's too far in the past, I believe. But um, looking at it here, Schneiderlin got a, a goal whilst they were a man down, France. Uh, to get it to 2-2, and they managed to scrape for on penalty. Uh, Raheem Sterling's two goals, just not enough there. So that was the first kind of defeat that Mourinho had. If we look at that European Championships, uh, you can see Portugal with a team who went on to win it. So that's kind of interesting. Let's have a look at the Premier League, though. The more, uh, Not the Premier League, the World Cup, the more recent kind of tournament. In terms of the qualifying, you can see here, it looks like they kind of passed the test with flying colours yet again. They did win the International League final, did England. They beat Italy 1-0 and then Germany 1-0 in the final. Raheem Sterling getting the important goal there. The rest of their qualifying looked fairly convincing for the World Cup. Not perhaps as convincing as the European qualifying. You can see they actually drew with Bosnia and Herzegovina. But then they got to the World Cup itself. And after friendlies against Ecuador, Portugal and Denmark, they um, they went into the group stage in Group H. Let's have a look at this group. So they were the last name out of the hat. And they were actually in a, a tricky group, I think it's fair to say, with Spain, Ghana and Mexico. They managed to get through, however, which is pretty good. It's worth noting, actually, Jack Butland here. Top of the clean sheets despite England going out so early on in this competition. So anyway, England did fairly well here. And then if we look at the second round, this is where they collapsed. They went out to Algeria on penalties. I mean, that's not great. I mean, to be fair, we, we, throughout this entire simulation, Mourinho has had terrible luck with penalty shootouts. As it turns out, this game was no exception. Eric Dyer missing the crucial penalty right there. Looking at the England squad, uh, you've got Eric Dyer, John Stones, Luke Shaw. I can only assume Courtney is a regen. He, is a re he looks like a quite, quite good fullback right there. But um, no, it's kind of a standard England team. The England team itself looked pretty strong. So to lose to Algeria, not not great, Mourinho. Not great, Mr. Jose. I'm kind of curious to know your thoughts here on uh, kind of this little simulation. Do, could you see Mourinho being England manager after Roy? Seems a, like a little bit of an odd one to me, but you never know. Football is a very weird thing when it comes to stuff like that. Anyway, that is all from me. If I missed anything in this video, you noticed anything that... I missed little details about Jose Mourinho's little kind of tenure in charge of Manchester United, then England. Please let me know down in the comments. If you have enjoyed this video, as always, smash the like button. Guys, I'm going to have some more simulations like these ones coming over the summer period. We're going to have, of course, um, a look at Conte at Chelsea later on in the summer. I've also already got Guardiola at Manchester City ready to go later on uh, this month. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, as I already said, leave a like. If you're new to my channel, you want to see more of this, you want to see more FM content in general, subscribe. And other than that, guys, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.